Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. We begin the fall 2007 season with what else? Politics. Rudy, Fred, Mitt, Hillary, Barack, and the Johns. And Mike, too? Iowa, New Hampshire, Florida, Michigan, Tsunami Tuesday. Oi. Joining me in this political bull session is Hank Scheinkoff, noted political consultant. Hank is the president of Scheinkoff Strategic Communication Limited, and he's worked in campaigns in four continents, nine foreign countries, and 46 states. I don't want to know the four you missed. He's also an active member of the Chattering Classes, an off-sited analyst and commentator. He's been called a political brawler and a lot worse. Welcome, Hank. Thank you for having me, Doug. You don't have any horses in this presidential race. Once is enough, thank you. I have 96. I'm not, I'm not, 96, one successful, 17 months. That's it. That's Next, it. Next case. Rest. Okay. But we've just made you the chief media consultant for the Democratic campaigns of Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and John Edwards. How do you react to the Petraeus Crocker report that was issued on, you know, the 10th? If I'm John Edwards, I go back to the issues that have worked for me thus far, class issues and how the poor are paying too much for this war. We've got to bring people home and make this country work again. Okay, so the populist... Populist argument, okay. because that's what he's done. You, okay. can't, you look, can't change that. Well, look, a horse is not a dog. You right. know, once you're a horse, right. you can't become right. a dog. It doesn't right. work that right. way. Right. Even, Even though some of the candidates are trying. Well, yeah, Gregor yeah. Mendel said that you can't do that. Well, I know, but poli yeah. politicians <clears throat> try to avoid that. With go respect ahead. to Hillary, I'm, I'm very consistent if I'm her. She's been opposed to the war for quite some time. She's raised questions about it. And she ought to say, you know, it's time to bring our boys home on a reasonable basis, according to Petraeus' report. I mean, that's not so difficult. Right. And with this, who's left? Barack Obama? Yeah. He can say, I, was, I told you from the beginning it wasn't going to work, and I'm, Petraeus has now proven us right. Let's bring the boys home and restore American support. Net impact on the campaigns? Zero. 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 What about the Republicans? I know, you know, Ed, Ed Rollins would be the guy to talk about it, but unfortunately couldn't be here. Now you were consulting the Rudy Giuliani, Fred Thompson, and Mitt Romney. People of either party are disgusted by the conduct of the war, whether they agree with the basic premise or not. What they're more concerned about is domestic terror, i.e. attacks within the country. That is something that the Republicans are better positioned, frankly, to talk about, and is seen as much more strong overall Why? on matters. Of, well, is there any basis to this perception? It, it, is, it is the failure of the Democrats in the post-Vietnam era. Remember, the Democratic Party, uh, regardless of my own affiliation, is their standard bearers of the people that won two world wars, got us through the Depression, created the Marshall Plan, um, frankly started the Cold War, protected this nation, yeah. and uh, lost the entire argument about national defense after Vietnam, right. ceding it to the Republicans. Right. And it wasn't just Vietnam, Doug. It was also the um, civil unrest of the 60s that made the Democrats appear to be absolutely out of control and therefore could not defend the nation. You know, there clearly was an interaction effect. And they played, the Republicans have played that Trump card certainly in 2000, more recently in 2004. Let's look at this election cycle. This is a pretty wacky election cycle. Sure. I mean, this is, if not sui generis, something's going on that's unlike what we've seen. Talk about, let's look at this. In, in, in macro, what what is about the historians looking back are going to say why they're going to say Hillary Clinton uh, probably might not have been the nominee had Barack Obama not done what he did, which was change the language in a way that talked to a younger generation of people who vote less and who are very different in their view about the. So you're saying he made world. a strategic mistake because very of strategic. the dem demog de demography, demography appeal. The demography, still? Demog demographic appeal. When he he threw himself out of the campaign, essentially. The day that he uh, talked, to, he had the great foreign policy exchange. The problem was he wasn't talking to people over 40 who have a higher probability of voting. He was talking to people under 40 who will pay no price, bear no burden, which is normative, by the way, to do nothing because they're interested in protecting their lifestyles. 
don't really understand foreign affairs, do not see the dangers in the world. So Hillary's the nominee based on the, more than that. More than that. She has stature. He has proven by doing those things that he doesn't. He's, he is an important historical figure. Do not denude this man or put him down. By his very presence, he helps resolve the, finally. He gets close. He gets the, this nation, this extraordinary nation, much closer to resolving the civil rights era than ever before. Were he the nominee, it would absolutely resolve it. But um, he's getting us closer to resolving. I think that's important. Well, if he were the nominee, there could be, in the inter-party clash, the us and the them could be fairly divisive. And, and, and We are a nation of uses and thems. I mean, if you go back to 1928 and you look at the Al Smith election, a white man who was a Catholic was castigated for his religion across this country. So we have made great strides. I don't wait want a minute, to be, I'm how, not a, I'm wait, not how great a strides that we made if Mitt Romney becomes the nominee come on Mitt Romney has a serious problem and it is and it is not of his own making he is a Mormon and the data would indicate that people have a very strong anti-Mormon streak but I would I would suggest the following and I'm not a Pollyanna my history is pretty clear about right. that right without no, by not, any we're by not any measure call you by any measure but I would suggest that this is a most extraordinary country we have a black man running for president from the mainstream not from the churches from mainstream politics, okay, propelled on his own intellect and ability. Extraordinary. From a we, large state. From a large state. It's an amazing, amazing change uh -huh. of events in this nation. A woman running for president, a U.S. senator from New York who has been in Arkansas and Illinois. Um, let's see, we have a Mexican-American named Bill Richardson. We have an Italian-American. An, I'm getting there. We have oh, an Italian-American okay. named Rudolph Giuliani. We have a Mormon running for president. It is an amazing, amazing... Now, which one of those guys are gay? Oh, I don't know about that. No, I'm, go ahead. I'm, I'm no, never, no, I'm go never, ahead. I'm not going to even. No, 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 no. I was, it, it was. Well, or as they would say on Seinfeld, not that there's anything wrong with it, and my history is pretty clear about there being nothing. No, wrong no, with no. It. Go ahead. Uh, but you have this uh, this amazing turn of events. There is something going on in the political system, though, that is maybe healthy, but I don't think is right now. I think both parties are in very, very, very serious trouble. The Democrats have been floating on non-ideology for some time. Uh, as one of the people who helped write the rhetoric in 1995 and 1996. For then President Clinton, um, I think that he tried very strongly to create an ideology that worked, that was present tense as opposed to past tense, that gave the Democrats the ability to get past the New Deal. Mm -hmm. What we found during the years the Democrats were in the desert before they took back both chambers, it was, you know, kind of the only thing they could do was defend the New Deal, and the only thing they can do now is attack George Bush. Bush, his opposition. If you look at the de Republicans, they are in similar problems. And let me tell you what the extremists Talk is. about, the, in a sense, the fracture, what, what I see is the fracture in the Republican Party. I think it's more than fracture. Here, if the Democrats are completely ideologically rudderless, which is true, the Republicans have deeper problems. In the post-Reagan world, or in the world created by Ronald Reagan, that resuscitated Republicanism as we know it, with a small R, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want the big R belongs to Hamilton and Madison. The small R belongs to these guys. That being said, based on two very strong tenets: one, we will bring a new morality to government, which is what brought the evangelical Christians and the South into the sure. equation. Okay, but that two, had begun with well, Goldwater in the sixties. But, but, but Reagan was a lot more. I, I understand. I understand. Uh, and had there been no Goldwater, there would not have been a Reagan for sure, and not been a Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, the second part of that equation is. In the post-Iran hostage world of 1979-80 and the Carter failures, uh, we'll make you strong again and we'll make you proud. So mm -hmm. what happens in 2006 is we have the Foley scandal, which reduces the moral argument out the window. And we have Terry the Terry Schiavo, there's a lot. We have the conduct of this war, right. whether one agrees with this war or not. So you're saying the which, two... Which reduces the, which is reduces the argument that we can make you safe again. The two legs, then, are... It's, it's cle you're saying it's cleaving, and there's no candidate to put the legs together it again? Is, it's you, Humpty Dumpty? It's Humpty Dumpty. The argument is, well, Rudolph Giuliani can. Well, here's the problem. The problem is he is not... Although there is a... And, and to the credit of the Republicans, there is a very strong libertarian streak that runs through that party which has less to do with social issues as sure. we define them, but more to do with leaving, but don't, you know, don't tread on me, the, the right. New Hampshire argument. Right. Well, Rudy's playing this federalism card. Let the states do it. Let the localities do it. He's playing that political he, he philosophy. Is, he is running as best as he can and as fast as he can. Will it work? Not clear yet. We don't know. There hasn't been a primary. His best argument probably is, I can beat Hillary Clinton. That's his best argument. Handicap the field Today? right now. Right now. I, it's, I, Second I, week in September. I am not. I am not that smart. So no, I, none of us are. So I would suggest the following: Fred Thompson is a bag of wind. I, talk, I, talk about that. Excuse that me. Is, that is bromides, pap, 
Is there any there there? Where's the beef? Oh, I mean, yeah. as, you as, know, I've, and, and one of my previous lives, we would say he should have stayed on the job and collected his pension. Nice, know? very nice. We're cruel. We're cruel. Uh, Go ahead. I, I don't see at this moment, and now remember, we're in September of 2007. I, I remember this. We have five months yet until the gigantic Tuesday, as opposed right. to Super Tuesday. Where does he get 25 million bucks to be competitive on Super Tuesday? That is the entry fee. Right. He, That's what it's going to cost. He needs mom. He needs money, organization, and message. Can he get the money? Can he get the organization? And does he really have a message? I mean, he's got the bromides. He's got the platitudes. But is there any, is there any thinking there? Look at the Republican. You talked about lack of ideology among the Democrats. Look at the Republican candidates. No, no, candidates. I'm, I'm also saying the Republicans I mean, are in very Rudy. serious trouble. I mean, Rudy's been on every side of the <clears> issue, just about Romney. He's, he's hopscotching all over the place. Come on. It is not clear what the Republican electorate will do. For a more ideological grouping of people, the problem that they face is rather really simple. Will they give up ideology and thus conscience? That's conscience, because ideology equals conscience yeah, in American politics. To nominate Rudolph Giuliani, who does not agree with them on anything they stand for. Because the, years back, the ultimate very good anti, off the top of my head, anti-Rudy commercial would be, let's see, uh, Rudolph Giuliani, he stood for America, that's true, on 9-11 for New York. But who was he really? Abortion? Why not, he says. Homosexuals? Marry them on the steps of City Hall. Immigrants? Let them take our jobs. Guns? Well, not for you. And now we learn that he publicly said that he not only cheated on his wife once, but twice. So there you have it. You just gave Wait away the air. <clears throat> let, me just, let me just finish. Go. There you have it. Rudolph Giuliani, wrong on, wrong on abortion, wrong on homosexual marriage, wrong on guns, wrong on immigrants taking our jobs, wrong on personal morality. You really think he shares our values? You know the answer. I mean, you put that up with 1,200 points. In South I love Carolina. it, Hank. That was good. I can do that on anybody else. I mean, you know, I, that's what I do all day long. But you see, that's a problem. Does it work? I'm not sure people care about that anymore. That is the problem the Republican Party faces because the ideology is gone just like the okay. Democrats. Okay, let's now move away from sort of this, yeah. this, this, these larger issues. Let's, let's look at these individuals here. Look at Rudy. Mm-hmm. Strengths, weaknesses, does he, does he get through it? He is an invention of the press. And you know what? He has done a brilliant job of capitalizing it. I think Does the 9-11 mystique ever get deconstructed? Russ Butner of the New York Times wrote an important story a couple weeks back on the front page of the New York Times, which said that he had spent a total, that Rudolph Giuliani had spent a total of 29 hours at ground zero. Not so good. Steve Cassidy, who's the head of the firefighters union, and who has a responsibility, a moral responsibility, to his membership, who paid mightily. He's going to make that argument very clear. He's going to tell people no. Okay, the question is, can Rudy be fire-hosed the same way that John Kerry was swift-boated? Is this a, a, a plausible means to deconstruct it, it, that it image? Is, it is not the only way to deconstruct him, because Rudolph Giuliani will stand up and yell and scream, and John Kerry hit under a table. Okay, so there's some, is there something about Rudy's personality in, in this? Are you People, for... will, even those who do not like him, and we all who live here in New York remember him well. Right. On 9-10, he had a 42% re-elect. The probability right. of being elected, had, there, had he been able to, would be zero to none. Oh, yeah. He left the city. He left Michael Bloomberg uh, or the next mayor. He expected to be Mark Green, would be my hunch. And absent the murders at the World Trade Center, it would have been Mark Green. That being said, he left uh, the, his predecessor with a tremendous budget problem. Sure. Not a nice guy. But um, you know what? He is a fighter, and it's not easy to walk all over him. He is not somebody who's going to go gently into that dark night. It's not going to happen that okay, way. Okay, he's in the lead in the polls <clears throat> as of the, the latest uh, Times poll. Correct. How does, how does he win and how does he lose? The, the nomination, not the general. Let's just talk nomination. Listen, there was an old district leader in Brooklyn. Oh, I love In Brownsville, that. he used to say... You can't beat nobody with nothing, okay? So far, we got nobody with nothing. Now, let's see if Mitt Romney, in, con in a constrained fashion, spends 50 or $100 million on television. That might change the numbers. That might change the numbers. What about Thompson? I mean, we talked about Thompson a bit. <coughs> He's running <coughs> close. He's running within the margin of error. Show me the dough. Right. It's show me the dough, not where's the beef. Show me the dough. Show you me can, the dough. If you got the beef, it doesn't matter. If you ain't got the dough to show the beef, you it ain't got the It doesn't matter. matter. Okay. 81 percent of all Americans get their information <laughs> from one place. Right. Statistical studies show I it. Television. This. Yes. So you spend the money, you do it. 
So are you are you are you telling me that 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 Romney is? I mean, you're handicapping this. I know we're doing it in ignorance. My my betting today is it's Rudy one, Romney two, Thompson three, and that's not Rudy. Now, what about what about the sequence of primaries? Let's go to the. <clears throat> The sequencing. One of the right. unique things about this environment is the jockeying of states for the primaries and the real early beginning of what is high intensity presidential campaign right. with all the dates, the, the, the debates, the money raising. We're in, a year early in all this stuff. Right. The luckiest people in the world are, are the, the political free, are consultants. No, 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 no. That's not true. Oh, okay. The luck, I mean, the luckiest people in the world are the free press. Reporters, print reporters, and yeah. electronic reporters. Yeah. Because okay. for the first time in a long time, they are going to be much more important than yep. they've ever been. Yep. And I think that's good for democracy, yeah. not bad at all. I uh, know. I, I I share your belief. They are going to have they are going to have the ability to to, to to help determine outcomes with greater frequency than they have had in quite some time, and that's to the good. The other lucky people are, frankly, political consultants who will be very busy. But money in primaries is tough to come by. It doesn't always get out there quick enough. Yeah, but it's it's it seems to be seeping out from everywhere. But only in a couple of places. Yeah, if you, you look at where the money's coming from geographically and across socioeconomic strata, this is a pretty broad-based Television funding. is not the only means to win these things. That's what I'm right. trying to tell you. Okay, go direct ahead. Mail will, direct, free press is critical. Direct Absolutely. mail will be more important. Direct personal contact. Voters are not dopes. You know, they've had 70 years... Almost 70 years of people in my business telling them what to do since the days, I think, when well, it's less than 70 years, about 60 years, when, when these actors uh, in the first spots that I recall done by BBDNO, an agency that no longer exists, jumped out of a foxhole and said, only Ike will go to Korea. And you saw the picture of Ike, and that was the end of that, as an Eisenhower. Um, people are pretty smart, and they're sophisticated, and they're getting information the way that they want. The Internet matters, because more people are getting more information from the Internet. We don't know how to calculate that yet. But that is an area of, um, you know, where political scientists and others ought to be paying some more But if you've got your budget, 80, 90 percent of it goes to TV. Not 90 percent. 80? Not, depends on the state. I mean, okay, again, okay, okay. you can't spend, you know, you, have, you, 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 have, you can't spend that kind of money in some states. And also the demographics of some of these states have changed. Nevada, which used to be cheaper to do campaigns, and is now much more expensive. In the old days, when I was a so kid... So you need more money. When I was a kid, you used to buy after midnight because everybody got off work and the clubs and the shows... But now they're working 24 hours a day, and also people live there all day long. I mean, people didn't live in Clark County in the way they do. Clark County is the fastest-growing retirement community where Las Vegas is in the country. Are these candidates, or any of the candidates, taking advantage of the knowledge, that, that knowledge? I hope so. I hope so. Well, I'm available for a 520. Oh, yeah, right. We, right now for a 527 <laughs> independent expenditure, but I'm not working right, on another. Right, right. I have, I have been asked. It's a pit. We're not doing a pit for you. I'm, 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 I have been asked, and I'm not forget doing it. it. You're not I, doing I, it. 527 Cut independent it. expenditure. Forget Next. Forget okay. It. Okay. This is going to be another battleground election. Wait sure. a minute. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> see an ad. I'm not going to get any mail. Why, All they're going to do is going to come into New York and get money. Why would you? Why would New York, which is a safe democratic state, right. So I'm not getting it. This is going to come so down to... So they're going to just run in Ohio and Florida. Listen. Welcome to the land of Sarkozy. Plus ça change, plus... Some, yeah, you know, right. Nothing changes. Right. Here, right. The last two elections. Here's what's going to happen. It's going to get down, ultimately, to the same 500,000 white Catholic men. That have been the game since since 68 and multiple variations. Mm, okay. And they're going to be there, and it's going to be... I mean, a, and, and, and now the betrayers... Geographically <clears throat> distributed in key electoral states. Listen, now the Petraeus, now the Petraeus has told us the game is up. The check is up, you know. I mean, that's it. Now the Petraeus has, put, has become Humphrey Bogart. We have to move forward, okay? And the forward is economics because the five hundred thousand people I'm talking about are scared to death about one thing: the destruction of the auto industry and all the jobs that are related to it. Not just in the plants, but everything else. They vote. They swing. They move back and forth. They just, they've elected a Democratic governor in Michigan and this voted for Republican. This is a pretty narrow definition <clears throat> of battleground. I can understand that. Yeah, why, California? Stop, California. California, forget. California is going to vote Democrat. Democratic. New Demo York's going to vote Democrat. So which are the five states that they're going to campaign in? My view, where the, where the action really is. Ohio. Local, Ohio, Michigan, Missouri, West, is, western Pennsylvania's half a state, and Florida. You want to be kind, throw in New Mexico. No, don't even. New Mexico doesn't have an election. Okay, so, so we throw have a Nevada. six state election. Throw Nevada so in. Eight, eight states. Big deal. It's, that's and it. Nevada's desert in. That's my point. So bring it back to the Midwest. Talk about Catholic men. And Hillary Clinton is better okay. positioned okay. than any other Democrat on that argument. How, do, how does this dynamic change? I would argue normatively this is bad for the country. 
I would argue normally it's bad for the country. And how do you how do you how do you break this? <clears throat> you know how you break it? Higher levels of participation. The traditional Democratic theorists would say, "Don't do it. Make It'll Brooklyn disrupt the sense." My Jeff, view is, on. get them out, turn them out, make them turn out. It didn't work the last time. You know as well as I do. Come but, on. Well, the good news for democracy is that the 2006 midterm election had a slight bump in turnout. Right. The bad news is nobody else before that had for quite some time. The bad news is no one's coming out. The bad news is. Younger people don't care about it. The good news is they turn out when, like everybody else, there's a rational argument here, a rational choice argument, which is when their uh, interests are impacted, they tend to turn out, right. i.e. they voted against Lieberman because they didn't want to go to the right. army. I understand that. You know, why not? I, I'm, I'm a firm Mike believer Barone, in Mike, the, ra the rational vote. <clears throat> Mike, Mike Barone had a great column after, uh, after the Lieberman election. He said people voted the way they did because they didn't want their lifestyles disrupted. Okay, rational to me. Yeah. I mean, and, and good we, for America. Well, we're political scientists, so we good, you know, good for we, America. We no, read this stuff. Good for America. No. Okay, so we've got, in addition to all of that, we've got the states playing leapfrog with the primary system, which dramatically has to affect campaign decision making, campaign strategy, sure. money raising, money spending. What's going on? It's anarchy. People are getting headaches. This is what happens when you have democracy. Okay. Democracy means that uh, there's, uh, you know, there's shouting, and not screaming, enough political yelling, bosses. And not That's enough political what... bosses. So you don't have anybody making decisions. So Florida keeps moving around. That's really great. Florida, 14 media markets in Florida. All the actions in the, uh, let's see, in the Tallahassee, if it's from, like, from Orlando to Tallahassee, in that region is where the Democratic vote is, plus in South Florida. But the Jews, Jews are not, there ain't that many of them. I don't want to blow anybody's mind, but you get north of Palm Beach County, it's hello, wasps. Uh -oh. except, for, except for Orange County, Orlando. We, we have Puerto Jews. Ricans. A lot of Puerto Ricans. Why? Because Disney imported Puerto Ricans to okay. go work in the resort. So Florida what? So Florida is a lot of media markets and a lot of money. So you got to plan that out. That's a lot of money. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. And who does South it Carolina, do? not a lot of money. Right. And, and, <clears throat> and, and the movement of states like Florida and Michigan, it would appear to me, advantage those candidates who have mom, the money and the organization, but also, like Hillary Clinton. That's correct. It advantages Hillary Clinton. And I'll tell you something else. It also lets the guys who are running those states, mostly guys, some women, but a lot of guys, allows them to then claim the chit, say we were the first to deliver right. for X. Right. Which means when the when the, when the big when the big day comes and they're all swearing in and the money goes out the door, they get their better shots. Okay. What about New Hampshire and sure. Iowa? I mean, are are their impacts mitigated? Are they enhanced? I mean, I I can make a case both ways. I can make a case both ways too. But I think what will happen is, for the first time in history in our lives, those two states we put in perspective, because no longer will they necessarily lead the entire march. They will say, "Aha." This is what occurred, and it could create momentum, but there's too much happening afterwards. Afterwards, and too close. And good reporters that David Broder, or Brownstein, and the others, um, Adam Nagorny, Patrick Keeley, people who really understand this stuff, um, will will be able to take that into their into their text into account. Tsunami Tuesday, February fifth. Some twenty states, sure. including New York, California, Illinois. Cold day here. <laughs> Two possibilities. One is the game's over in sure. both parties. That a candidate's got enough. I don't know what percentage of the delegates, but there's a huge, it's got to be a huge percentage of the delegates in both. But the other possibility is that you've got splits. Sure. You've got somebody well, you winning have... California, somebody winning New York, somebody winning well, Illinois. Well, it also depends. Then, not, not all these states are winning to take all states also. That's right, but most of them are. <clears throat> most most of, them are. of them are as of now. It's conceivable that you could have a real convention fight. Because if, if you don't, if you've got a big enough split listen, in listen. February, there we, ain't enough we are now, left. We are now in September of 2007. We have five, little less than five months to go in this caper. Iowa data, two weeks ago, I think two or three weeks ago, Bill Schneiders at CNN had a great poll out that said, guess what? In Iowa, Hillary, um, Edwards, Barack Obama all clumped up together. That ain't good news for anybody but Hillary Clinton. Right. Which tells you that voters are making decisions. So they you're, want to win. So you're you're looking at what's happening <clears throat> right now, and you're seeing are you seeing voter engagement here. Are you sensing that people are paying more attention to this election? I am sensing that the, that there. I have always believed that there is never voter stasis. That voters tend that voters are incessantly taking in information at their own time span. But mm -hmm. They're taking it in. That they're making decisions, and they don't—they tend, unless there's crisis, not to make decisions late. 
note the 1978, it's 1980 election where mm -hmm. Pat Goodell noticed that that flipped in three days. And it right. Did. And there have been other examples like that. But I would suggest the following, that Americans are getting, and the Democratic side, are getting much more comfortable with Hillary Clinton. And she's got, you know, this, it, it'd, take, it, you'd have to, it'd be take a real leap of faith for me not to believe she's not going to be the nominee. Yeah, and then one of the things about the Democratic race that's different than the <coughs> Republican is that the Democratic race has really been extremely static in terms of her, the, her lead and the width of her lead, while the Republican has been much more fluid. The bad so, news, again, John Edwards... Uh, He's got, Iowa he ain't got nothing left to lose. I would expect some fireworks out of Edwards. He's got to go on the attack. Well, Come on. you know, you always attack the front runner. The problem is what do you get in return? Go back to the Republicans a second. Their problem is that although the Democrats have found where they want to go, the Republicans now are going through what the Democrats went through some time back, which is they have no idea who they are. And, and that, that is a and, and, and what does that lead <clears throat> to? I mean, what? okay, it's now the summer of 2008. Who's the Republican nominee? Uh, again, I think that it. I think it's one of two. I don't. Okay, think Rudy Fred, or Mitt. Or Mitt. I don't think that uh, Fred Thompson's a player, and I and I would give the edge to Mitt Romney for a couple of reasons. We oh. don't know what the impact is, and I may be wrong, but we have yet to. See if here's the here's the variable. Does he take seventy five or fifty million dollars and put it up on the air? We don't know what the impact is is of short but sustained in a media buy, a media at those levels. So this uh, this boils down to the money game. Certainly, money and money is more of a more is, is loom more uh, significantly as a participatory tool in American politics. There's no question. And about and it. and religion plays a role, but it's not determinative. I I have um, real uh, empathy for fundamentalist Christians and others who are religious people and who have inculcated. You know, the Tocqueville talked about right. religion as the great as the great moderator. You know, as a, as a way to ensure that the system worked because it would keep people in line, effectively. We'd give them a, a sense of belonging. And the Southern tradition is part of that. I have tremendous, you know, upset for them because the things and, they believe in have been destroyed. And why? What's the political I think they're still gonna, the they're still gonna vote. They're still going to vote for the cap. They're still going to vote for the Republican. I don't care who it is. Okay. So it's... It it's Hillary versus Mitt or Rudy. Yeah, today that can change, but you would it have could to... change this afternoon. Look, this is the exciting game without any rules. That's what politics is. That stole that from a great baseball book called Bang the Drum Slowly, and it still is Teg War. Okay. You're coming back. Hope so. Next time with your colleague. With, well, if he shows up again, if, if not, up, I'm if happy not, to do the show with you. Take care of yourself. Thanks for having me in. Thank you, Hank. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.